Hi there and welcome. So in today's video, we are gonna build this walnut table. Uh, kitchen table, approximately 80 inches long and 55 inches wide. Big enough to sit about 12 people around, two on each ends and four down the sides. Uh, we've got some custom made legs in the bottom that match the house and uh, banisters. So we'll go through the full bill. It's all made with uh, scrap wood, really, or uh, cutoffs, all multiple strips. I'll show a picture of what this started with, and uh, we'll start with the full build video. So today we're gonna start building our walnut kitchen table. And I'm actually just gonna use a pine base. I originally was gonna go with maple, but we're gonna paint it. So it will be wal walnut top and uh, just a pine base. Made a quick sketch of what I'm doing. Let's see if you can see this here in the video. So basically, one on the top, we're gonna to do a two post base instead of a, uh, like a farmhouse style table, just cause we're going uh, 50 inches wide by approximately 80 inches long. And we'll do a support brace in the middle, which will be walnut as well. So I picked up some two by sixes that I will use to create the legs and uh, feet for the table. The walnut I've got is a whole bunch of cutoff strips. Of, I've got some 12 foot pieces, uh, some eight and 10 foot pieces here that we'll, we'll use. And what they are is they're rough one side. So this is uh, just a cutoff from one of them. So it's rough one side. Dimensions pretty well, they're about just around two inches thick. And then we've got one decent side here just with saw marks as well. So I'm running these through the planer to clean up the rough side, then I'm just gonna flip them over and clean up the other side. So I've got some underneath the pine here and I've got quite a bit more planed on both sides over there on top of the table saw using the DeWalt planer back there for all the planing. And what I'm gonna do here is start on some of the two by sixes, which I'm not running through my DeWalt. I'm gonna run through an old Mastercraft planer just because I find the knots in the pine sometimes chips my blades in the uh, DeWalt, which I have the Shelix blade in it. So I'd like to save that one for the good wood, which will be all the one. All right, so we've got most of our, actually all of our walnut uh, planed on both sides. So we can start making up some panels. And some of them have got some really cool grain in it. You can see in this one here, we've got a wavy pattern across the whole piece, across the face grain and edge grain on it. It's got this wavy pattern on it. So we might save this one for the uh, one of the outside edges of the table. So the next, what I wanna do is actually plane down some of the two by sixes so we can get those ready for some of the feet. So I drew here, you can see the, this is how I want the foot, approximately five inches wide by about four inches tall. So we're gonna take three two by sixes, sandwich them together to make that piece, but I wanna plane down the edges so that we get a nice glue surface. And so if we had three pieces of two by sixes, we're gonna glue them here like this. I'm gonna plane this side, two sides of the middle piece and one side of the outside piece. Once we've got that together, then we'll use that as our blank for the two feet. So we'll uh, get that ready next. Okay, so what I did last night was uh, glue some of the two by sixes together. So I've got one here. These ones I've just got double thick, the one more double, and then the three thick, which we're using for the feet. These ones here are gonna be for the four posts we're gonna have on the table. Uh, the outside trim is gonna be about three eighths to a quarter of an inch. So I want the inside to be about three and a half inches by three and a half inches. So we'll just see what we get. I'm just gonna cut these up into some smaller manageable pieces. These legs are going to be approximately 22 inches tall. So I'm going to cut these at about 28 to work with and we'll uh, trim them up in the end. So I'm going to cut that up first and then we'll run these through the uh, planer to spread them off and probably the table saw too. Okay, so where we're at now is I've got four legs done. 
I've run these through the planer on both sides after I've squared them up on the table slaw. Table saw, it's not a table slaw. I used a machinist square just to check squareness and where I can't even see a gap. So we're good for that. And I've left these long so they're rough on the ends because we are going to use the table saw crosscut sled to cut these to length once we have our desired length. And then we're going to trim these out with a, probably a three quarter inch trim anyways. So we're going to use these first. I've done the same for the two feet. Run these through the planer on both directions. I had to shim them a bit because they did go in a bit, I guess, out of angle. So using the square and I put a couple strips of masking tape just along the bottom edge to tilt it. Run it through the planer, flip it over, take the tape off, re-square it up, and now we're square because I don't have a jointer. So you, what we're going to do first is these two feet, they're going to sit this way. We're going to cut them to our desired length. Then we're going to start shaping them to put our 45s in and cut out some of the bottom. And I haven't figured out how I'm going to do that yet. So that'll come up. So here's what I'm going to, what I'm going to do to uh, cut these feet. I want them to be 38 inches long and we've got lots of room to play with. So here's 38 inches. So I know I want to cut off at least two inches off each end for the planer snipe. That's going to come off for sure. So what I'm going to do is trim up one end here on the table saw using this panel sled, I guess you can call it. I'll flip it over because the blade won't go this high. And then I'll make a mark at 38 and we'll trim the other way. That's how I'm going to do it. Okay, I wanted to show where we were at. We've got our two feet uh, base cuts here to length. They're not exactly the same length, which is fine. We're gonna correct for that later. So what I'm gonna do now is our two posts for each side is gonna sit approximately here and here on the base. What we're gonna use a table saw for here is we're gonna cut off 45 on the outside corners. But I also wanna take out this bottom section I don't know if you probably can't see that with that. Let's use a Sharpie. So I'm going to cut a 45 there. And all of this is going to come out whatever depth we want. We'll cut another 45 on this side. And we're going to hollow out that. I'm going to actually use the table saw for that. So I'll set that up next. So here's our feet for the table. This is actually flipped upside down. This is after I ran it through the table saw to hug out the center here. For the 45s, I just raised the blade half a turn and just sort of stepped it down. You can see, I'm not sure if you can see, there's a, like some steps for the 45s. All I'm going to do is uh, just chisel these off so that it's uh, flat and then we'll Take the sander and we'll sand it down. Anyways, I'll get better at that. And then for here, you can see there's a lot of lines. I'll probably just sand that down with an orbital sander. This will be the bottom side of the table anyways. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be smooth. What I wanted to show you real quick is I glued, as I put together some of the uh, boards that we're going to use for the center stretcher across the bottom. Earlier I planed off two pieces of uh, walnut on each side for both, glued those together, and then what I'm going to do now is run these through the planer to clean up this face here. And then we will glue these together this way, then we'll square this all up after and this will become our center stretcher. All right, so our next step here is we've got our base for our two our feet. Two posts are going to go here. This will be the cap that will go on top of the post and this will give us our height adjustments. So we'll just cut off the post to the height once we get it set up. But I want these poles here to match. So all I'm going to do is I've cut this to the same length. I'm just going to line these up. I'll make 
some matching marks and I'll trace out the same spot. I'll do the same technique with a Forstner bit to hug out most of it and I'll uh, chisel the rest out to make it square and that'll be our caps. So I'll pick the side I did like the best I guess which there'll be another cap on top of that so we'll do that next. Okay so I'm gonna have to show a part that I messed up on. Draw my layout lines for the two feet. I cut the holes on the opposite side of the two lines so nothing lines up. Not cool. You can have one end of the table like this and one end like this. It's not going to be good. So we're going to have to fix this. What I'm going to do is I like the position of these ones better. So I'm going to redraw the lines and the position for the legs on this one. Recut out the bottom holes here. I'll probably go a little bit deeper than this one. So then I'm going to take another block of pine. We'll fill in this and glue it in. This is going to be painted anyways. So this will be on the inside of the table. It will never be noticed, but we need to fix it so everything lines up a little better. Okay, so here's where we're at. We've got our base. We've got two done. It's, these are just soft to fit in. We've got our foot, top brace. This is just rough right now because we need to trim these a little bit shorter so we get our tabletop to the proper height. From the bottom center, we're going to cut out a piece here and then a bottom stretcher of walnuts and it will go across the bottom. On top of this brace, we're going to have another 2x6 as well that will be out a little bit further, plus a center cross in the middle as another support piece, plus our tabletop. So the total height with the tabletop, we want it to be at the top of the table only 29, which is actually right here. So this will be the height of the table we want at 29 inches. So these are gonna to have to be trimmed down quite a bit because we want this piece to be probably close to 24, 25 inches. But I'm not gonna trim these until I get a closer idea of how thick the tabletop's gonna be. So we'll leave this for now and we'll start working on our center stretcher to uh, clean that up and then we'll get the next layer on top of there. All right, so let's just do a quick overview of where we're at. Uh, I did record some video earlier. I'm not sure if the audio actually came through, so we're just gonna start over, I guess. Here's our basic design of our table. We want our center two supports to be about 46 inches apart on the inside. Our tabletop is gonna be about 80 inches long in the end, so I want about 14 inches overhang around the outside, so from the inside post here to the outside, it's gonna be, I think, 13 on the outsides, 14 on the ends, and our height is gonna be at 29. So this is kind of a mock-up of where we're at here. You can see on these back feet where I uh, screwed up the alignment, so we'll have to fill that in here. You can see that one on this end. Our center stretcher here is playing down to size, Now I just need to cut it to length but I wanted to line this up first. So right now we are sitting about 47 inches, which is good because I'm going to be adding about a half an inch cover on these as well for some trim. We're sitting at 29 and a quarter inches. This is a sample of the top and center support across here. We'll have another board there as well. Shout out to show a quick progress video of where I'm at. So this is the feet and cross piece here. I've got it upside down. So what I did is I drilled two holes to mount it with some lag bolts and washers. These are stainless steel lag bolts. Go all the way through and about an inch into the walnut. And you can see on the other side, I'm just starting them as well. I'll flip it over here in a sec and you can see what it looks like flipped over. All right, so here we've got the bottom feet flipped over with the cross piece bolted in. Walnut, the pine here is going to be painted white. And this spot here, that spot, is going to be filled in because I screwed up. And you can see where the walnut is. I cut the 45 on it. All the edges will be chamfered so it's nice and smooth. It'll be 
sand it down. The feet also have the 45s cut on the ends. And that's what it looks like on that end. All right, so I wanted to show where it was at. Uh, so we've got our frame. These are glued on to the post here. I've started on these, this corner here to do the trim. So I've got a cross piece here. I've just clamped in place. I've made sure it was center. And I've got these, which are gonna be glued and screwed here. They're gonna come off a little bit, so it gives me a little bit more width. And what I did on the table saw first was run a groove in there because we're going to use the tabletop clamps that will go into the groove and we'll screw into the tabletop to allow for movement. So I did that first on the table saw before we glue this on so don't have to worry and try and route it out later. And anyway, so that's where we're at now. Uh, I'm going to glue and screw these on here. This piece is not going to be glued, it's only going to be lag bolted in. So once I have the, these set in place, then I will drill a hole on each side of this cross piece here to mark it and I will lag bolt that into place. And I will continue working on the tabletop. I'm still gluing some of the uh, panels together before we start uh, planing it down. What I've got here is a bunch of our walnut panels. They're all about six and a half inches wide all multiple strips, various widths, kind of rounding pattern. I've got two here, uh, another one in the back. This one here is, I haven't started any painting on this one yet. Uh, I can show a quick close up of what these look like. Yeah, see if that, so this is pretty rough. I've uh, scraped off all the glue squeeze out on these already. Uh, these two over here, I've planed down partially. You can see here, there's still a bit of a lip. It's only probably less than a 16th of an inch. A few spots on this one. I'm leaving them at this height because they're not all the same height right now. So what I'm gonna do is I will run these through the planer when I have them all close. That way I can get them all to the exact same height. I've left them at this stage here because I want to make sure there's no twist or warp in them. So if there is, I can adjust that and fix it before they get down to final thickness. Uh, let's zoom back out here. I've got four more of these long panels to do, and then we'll start us getting them ready for final thickness planing. And then what we'll do is we will clamp them all together to make our big tabletop. The uh, six inch wide width, I went with that width mostly because of weight to manage these through the planer as well as it still gives it a bit of flex to uh, when I clamp together they will still bend back into shape if there's any bow to them. Um, as an example this one here has actually got a slight bow to it from one end to the other uh, that's probably only an eighth of an inch but I did a test clamp together and it sucks up that gap really easily. So I don't have to worry about uh, trying to recut the edges uh, flat again because they have enough flex in them, they'll just bend back into shape. So that's where we're at. I will continue to plane these down to rough size, check for, like I say, twist, bow. Then I'll plane them all down to the same thickness and then we will clamp them together. I got this all on a large piece of melamine to make a, as flat of a surface as I can. I've got another three quarter inch piece of MDF underneath as well as some straight pieces of maple across a couple uh, sawhorses and I can't get it any flatter than that. So that's what we're going to use as a reference and that's where we're at. Here's a quick shot of the underside of the table. Hopefully it's not too jiggly. I'm actually just holding the camera. So the bottom rail I've got here, you can see I've got two lag bolts going into it from both sides. I'll mark this end for end because they're not exactly in the same spot. And I'm just finishing the underside here, rounding off all the edges and going to about 120 grit and I'm getting ready for painting. 
Before I paint, I'm going to take this rail. I'm actually going to ease off all the edges by hand. And I'll finish this probably with about, I don't know, maybe a 220 grit. And then I'll take it off before I do any painting and I'll finish the uh, center rail separately. And that's it for the bottom. I'm going to flip it back over and finish the rest of the sanding. You can see the rails here I've got done. Here's a close up. I have filled in some of the gaps with some wood filler and this will all be painted to match the trim in the house. I 45'd off, that's actually the top underside, so 45 those off to match the feet, which I have a 45 there. So that's it for the underside. I'm going to flip it back over and finish some sanding. Okay, so what I've got here, I've got a simulated glue up of how I'm going to do it. Uh, I've got all my 2 by 4s to keep it as straight as I can. There actually are some that just have a tiny lip that you can catch your fingernail on, but the seams lengthwise are pretty damn good. I have no gaps that I can see anywhere from both sides. And zoom in a little bit here. Let's see if this zoom works. So you can see there are no seams between any of the planks that we've got. I did have some that were, weren't were square. There was about two or three of them here that weren't 90 degrees on the edge. So what I did is I actually ran those through the table saw to uh, clean up one edge. One of the planks had a really, really light strip on the outside edge that didn't match anything, it stood out. So when I ran the others through the table saw, I took that one and trimmed it off. I think it was this piece here, I'm not sure. Anyways, one of the strips here was really, really light. So I cut that off as well. We are sitting at about 51 and a half inches wide, and we're gonna trim this down to about 80 inches in length. I've got about inch and a half on both sides that I can play with, and I will trim that off after. So this is how I'm gonna glue it up, and I might get some help to put this back together so I can get it set up before the glue sets. All right, so here we actually have the bottom of the table. Uh, you can see the color on it. I've actually wiped it down with some mineral spirits. So after the glue up, what I did is I cleaned off the glue from the top, which is actually this side right now, the underneath. Uh, I sanded it down with a 60 grit orbital to clean up all the glue and <coughs> excuse me, any of the pieces that were up or any seams. Then I had it flipped it over, then I cleaned up the glue, went with the 60 grit, then to a 120 grit orbital. And then from there I took uh, 100 grit sandpaper uh, by hand and I followed the grain until any of the sanding marks were out. Took a small flashlight with it. I also took a eighth inch router bit to all of the edge on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna finish the bottom before I flip it back over and I will do the finishing on the top. So I'm letting the mineral spirits here just dry up and then I'm gonna put a coat of that. The general finish armor seal on the bottom will probably be about five coats. I'll sand it between every second coat. And then on the final one will be a light one just to cover up the sanding marks. On the top, I'm probably gonna go about eight to 10 coats, sanding between every second one as well. So like I say, we'll get the bottom one done, bottom side done. I'll flip it over and then I'll work on the top side. All right, so here we are at the end of the build. This is the finished table. We've got it in the house, in the kitchen, and it's being used daily. And you can see there's a puzzle on it that I didn't want to move and accidentally drop. So we're just going to leave it. So you can only see about half the table right now. Some of the uh, video clips that I had done didn't quite turn out. The original microphone that I had on it was cutting in and out, or I didn't have it on. Who knows? 
So I've got some clips that I didn't get into the uh, full video and that was some of the top finishing. The uh, table ended up having a slight bow to the top, so it was a bit high in the middle. Maybe about an eighth of an inch from end to end, so I spent some time using a belt sander and a hand plane to take down some of the top to flatten it out. Uh, part of that process caused some tear out, unfortunately, in some of the, uh, the strips because grain direction is going to go in multiple ways here. So what I did was uh, I filled all the little tears with some epoxy, then uh, sanded it off in the end, and there might be one or two spots where you can actually see it. It blends so well into the grain once you've got the finish on it, you can't tell. So I've got the same finish on the top using the uh, general finish armor seal with probably about 12 coats in the end. Um, that's about it. The, uh, as for the video clips, the microphone that I was using was this one. It is a Tech Pro DS. Some, it was pretty cheap, 20 bucks. It was a powered mic. Seemed okay at the time, but it didn't turn out okay. Even when it was on, sometimes it would cut in and out. I'd get one side or left or right. You may have noticed that in some of the clips. So I've since upgraded to the Rode Video Micro, which is what I'm recording with right now. And I think the sound is quite a bit better. It's not professional, but it works great. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.